Welcome YouTube to another segment in the Geek Life known as D&D Fridays. Today we'll start a special series on D&D Fridays called Characters Overview where we'll go um, week by week over one or two different classes and just give a brief summary of what that class is all about. And, um, and later on, um, we'll go into a different series, maybe next year, and we'll give a more detailed, in-depth look in each of the subclasses. But for now, let's showcase what the overview of each of these classes can do. Bards also comes in, bards come in all shapes and sizes. A lot of folks think of, of a bard as a musician this lute playing bard, this flute playing bard, a guitar, whatever. But bards could be much more. It could be a singing bard, it could be a poet laureate bard, it could be um, a, a journalist bard. So there's a few different ways you can go about with, with being a bard. Now a bard is a full spellcaster, a full caster as it's known. Although it's a little bit different than your mo than most of your regular full casters, as you only get up to 22 um, spells known, um, as opposed to 25 spells that can be prepared for, by a cleric or a druid or a um, wizard. So there's definitely that to think about as a bard, but. Um, a bard is all about something, some sort of artistic um, feel, um, maybe about music, maybe about art or something like that. Um, so one of the biggest um, class features of a bard is what's known as a bardic inspiration. Now a bardic inspiration does many different things depending on what subclass of bard you pick up. But the common thing of a bard is you can expend a usage of a bardic inspiration, which is your charisma, which you have equal to your charisma mod, to give to one of your allies, and that ally can roll that die, which starts off as a d6, but goes up to d is it a d10 or a d12, and they can. I'm sorry. It's a d12 at level 15. Yep, a d12, and they can roll that and add it to any one ability check, save and throw, or attack, I believe. Yep, uh, that's correct. And you can use it either before you roll, which is all fine and dandy, but most times you would want to save it until after you make your roll to see what you did. As long as you use it before the result is deemed a success or a failure. So if you know that you rolled, a, let's say, a, a 13 on your wisdom saving throw and you're not sure if that passes or not, or you know that the passing threshold is a 15, go ahead and roll that bardic inspiration, potentially turning that, that fail into a save, which can be very useful. Very useful. <laughs> now the big thing of a bard is a bard is one of the two skill monkeyers of D and D. What that means is, if you start off on level one with a bard, you can choose any three skills to pick up proficiency in. So that offers a lot of versatility from that standpoint. And then also starting off on level three, and then again on level 10, you can choose any two skills that you have proficiency in and gain expertise in those skills, which basically means you double your proficiency bonus for that skill, which is very useful. Very useful. And there, I've seen many bards who with expertise have a outstanding like like plus 17 in persuasion or plus 17 in intimidation and I mean once you get up to those ridiculous things you're you're for the most part going to be auto succeeding on stuff basically to yeah. fail you're going to have to roll like a one or a two <laughs> which I mean still can happen <laughs> which still could be a success <laughs> yep <laughs> especially considering there's 
things that you can use to bolster that like um for instance um friends or charm person or other spells like that yep or somebody just taking the help action to give you advantage on that particular yep, skill exactly. check and the other big thing of a bar is what's known as magical secrets um, what magical secrets is is on level 10 and then uh, gain on 14th and 18th level is you get to choose um, two spells on each of those levels that can come from any spell list. You can pick two up from the bard list, one from the bard list, one from the cleric list, two from the wizard list, any combination like that, and they become bard spells for you. So basically, if you pick something up from the wizard list, it becomes a bard spell for for you so you can use charisma for that spell instead of intelligence which is really good some common some very popular examples of magical secrets is okay i'm going to pick up counterspell as one of my magical secrets but bards don't normally get counterspell but now i have counterspell as a bard <laughs> which brings me to another point Bards also have another feature called Jack of All Trades, which gives half of their proficiency bonus to any skill check that doesn't already have their proficiency added onto that. Which most people you think of stealth and persuasion and stuff like that, but Jack of All Trades also applies to initiative and counter spell checks and dispel magic checks. That's that's very powerful. That is a that is a great great skill. Yep. So bars are really good when it comes to not only skill checks, but they're really good battlefield control, utility, support, buff slash debuff type of characters. As you'll see um, once you take a look at their um, spell list and the fact that they can pick up any spell they want with magical secrets. So while they're known for that whole support type of flavor, you can build it as a blaster if you want ma with magical secrets. You can build your bard any way you want, way you want. which is a huge um, thing to bards. So let's take a brief look into some of the into the subclasses of bards. The first one in the PHP is lore bard. The lore bard is all about that history, that the reading the books, stuff like that. Um, they really double down into some of the intelligence stuff. So first off, they on level three, they get proficiency um, with three more skills of their choice, really doubling down on that abil that ability check stuff. And at level six, they pick up two extra magical secret spells, which is really good. Not only is that two extra spells from any class, but unlike the other regular magical secrets you get, these two specific ones don't count against the number of spells you know. So you're basically getting two free spells on top of it. And then um, wow. one of the and then their fourteenth level subclass um, ability is peerless skill, which is good because when you make a ability check expend a use of your bardic inspiration and add that number to that ability check so basically you get to use what your bardic inspiration instead of just your allies very very useful uh, great way to be able to not only help help out the team but make sure that you're not lagging behind in some of that stuff as as you know the, the adventure continues and those levels keep going up. Yep. And the next one is from the PHP is the College of Valor Bard. The Valor Bard is one of the two more mm -hmm. melee type of bards. So by becoming a Valor Bard you, you gain proficiency with medium armor, shields, martial weapons. And then also 
on level six, you get your extra attack, so you can, so you basically are a full caster martial character. Mm -hmm. And then at fourteenth level, whenever you use your action to cast a bard spell, you can make a attack with your bonus action. So you're basically an eldritch knight with that ability. Yep. But which is pretty pretty good, especially considering what the bard can do. Absolutely. So moving on to the um, to Xanathar's um, subclasses for the bards, there's a few interesting little things within the Xanathar. So the first one is the Glamour Bard. The Glamour Bard is all about um, like how the public perceives this bard, music, stuff like that. Um, so you get like enthralling um, performance, mental majesty, stuff like that. Like one of the interesting things is they can use one of their bardic inspirations and everybody within uh, all their allies within a certain radius of them can use their reaction to not only gain some temp HP, but can also move um, a portion of their speed as well, which doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. So it's so if you happen to be surrounded or something like that, you can just hit that up, get your ally out of danger without having to worry about taking a bunch of opportunity attacks or something like that. And they have some temp HP to help sponge some attacks coming their way, which is really good. Which is great. Yeah. Absolutely. The next one is the College of Swords Bard, which is the other martial bard subclass. So they get um, proficiency in medium armor and the scimitar. And they, and whatever weapon that they're proficient in, they can use that as the spellcast and focus, which can be useful. Absolutely. So, um, which has some uses. Um, I kind of prefer the Valor Bard proficiencies. They get a lot more versatility what what they get. But this one is good because you can use your scimitar or whatever weapon you use as a spellcast and focus, which is good. And and um, what the Swords Bard is all about is com they also get a fighting style, either two weapon fighting or dueling, and they get different flourishes, so they can basically use their bardic inspiration to beef up their martial prowess by adding in like a little bit of extra AC or something like that. Absolutely, it's uh, uh I'll, we'll keep going. I'll, I'll add my comment here here in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> And the last subclass from Xanathar's is the College of Whispers Bard. This is kind of like your um, your Harper's Bard or, or something like that, where they operate in kind of like a spy network type of deal. Um, so they offer so they offer a few different things. Um, one of their interesting powers is what's known as Psychic Blades. So basically, what Psychic Blades is is whenever is whenever you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend a bardic inspiration to deal an extra 2d6 psychic damage to that target. And it increases every every so often to a maximum of 8d6 at 15th level. And That's a lot of dice to be throwing. <laughs> and if you think about it, 8d6, that's a fireball's worth of damage. Exactly to one creature which can be very good as an additional as an additional as additional damage on top of what you did with your weapon yep so it's like can you imagine if you get something like booming blade or green flames blade you do all of that damage from that cantra plus this 8d6 that's a gnarly amount of damage with just one yes, weapon attack So, yeah, the college of... the exact the exact right word to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, with like boom and blade and this, you can do upwards of what like eight d six plus like three d eight or plus your weapon damage or something or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Is exactly you, you just 
exponentially are going up and and just <clears throat> you know making it just outputting more and more damage like like is like as if you were a fighter class instead of a bard class so it's pretty much just like you want to play a full caster martial character to do burst damage but you don't want to play a paladin play a whispers bard and pick a booming blade or green green flame blade <laughs> exactly and then within um tasha's um guy or cauldron we get a few new things within um within tasha's so the first one is the college of creation which is kind of like the um create in different types of things so um so for instance um they have something called a creative crescendo on 14th level where whenever you use your third level feature you can create more than one item at once equal your um equal and up to your charisma modifier and if you create an item that would exceed that number you choose any one of the previous items to disappear and um and you're no longer limited by the GP value of when creating stuff with that lower level ability, which is really good. Um, so think of like a, was it a conjuration wizard? I believe that creates stuff. This is the. That sounds good. Yep. Yeah, this is basically the charisma version of it. Absolutely. And the last one is the College of Eloquence. Bar. Before you before you move on to, to to that one, one of the other cool feats with the College of Creation is that you can animate an object, right? So if you're in the middle of, of combat, you can this this is this isn't available until sixth level, but still, you know, you're animating an object, and now you've got a little buddy buddy item that you can uh, have have uh, have uh, help with things. Right, whether it's in combat or fodder, you know, go in there, animated object, and uh, go distract these guys for us a little bit. <laughs> so that can be very useful, not only in combat but out of combat as well. Absolutely. And then the last um, op, uh, subclass is the College of Eloquence. The College of Eloquence is all about that whole um, kind of like an ambassador type of thing. They can more or less be able to speak to anything, no matter the language. So basically, um, one of their abilities on level 3 is Silver Tongue. Whenever you make a persuasion or a deception check, you treat a roll of 9 or below on a d20 as a 10 so kind of like the reliable talent of a rogue right so exactly so if you put the expertise into either one of those basically that means the lowest you can roll is a 27 with a maxed out charisma and a, and a plus six proficiency bonus there's only one word for that disgusting <laughs> disgusting it is so Silver tongue, you know, em exemplifies exactly what this this skill is meant to be, right? You are literally using your your words to make people around you do whatever you want them to do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Another op cool option of the eloquence bard is their sixth level ability, unfailing inspiration. Whenever an ally of yours that has a bardic inspiration of yours uses it for ability check or whatever, they basically roll it at that number and then keep that bardic inspiration. So basically for the full 10 minute duration of the bardic inspiration, that ally can roll it as many times as they want. That's a, that is a great, a great skill. Yep. So pretty much what that is, there's pretty much no reason not to roll a Bardic Inspiration die unless you're 100% sure that you passed whatever you're trying to do. Even then, even if you're 100% sure, just do it to, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
And then one of the big things, uh, probably the biggest thing of the College of Eloquence is that is their other six levels um, ability, universal speech. In a nutshell, what that means is as an action, you can choose one or more creatures up to your charisma modifier within 60 feet of you. Those chosen creatures can magically understand you regardless of the language you speak for an hour. So you want to talk to somebody, but you don't share a language? Use that and you're good. Use that. You're good. Use that 27 minimum persuasion score you have. <laughs> Yeah. This seems like a very uh, I'm trying to think of a good real world uh, equivalent to this, right? It's it's literally like like the car salesman, right? They always have they're fast talking. They always have the answer, you know, an answer for what you're looking for. They're you know, and they're 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 always just trying to talk and talk and talk and talk to you. So. Uh, very interesting skill set for the College of Eloquence bards. Yeah. So I, th so I think um, looking at the bard subclasses, I think the lore bard is probably one of the most powerful, generally speaking, of the bard subclasses. Just because of what it can do. Mm. And I think the eloquence bard is probably the most one of the most, if not the most powerful, Bard subclass in terms of RP stuff. Absolutely, I I will agree with that about the call, the the eloquence Bards. Yeah. Um. Yeah. One of the other things that kind of struck me here is that the Bard is sort of an amalgamation of multiple classes. Let me take a little bit from Fighter. Let me take a little bit from Rogue. Let me take a little bit from Sorcerer. A little bit from Wizard mix that up and switch everything to be using to use charisma instead of intelligence or wisdom or decks or something like that um, so it's it you know if you want to get a little bit of flavor of what the other classes are like you know picking a bard might be uh, one of the you know one of the would be the class for you to pick right so you can kind of flavor everything else if you're not a hundred percent sure uh, what you want to do right um, because even you know with the the College of Swords and the College of Valor, you get that extra attack, right? Which is specifically a feat of a fighter, right? It's a skill of a fighter. So um, it's very interesting. Very interesting to me that that's how they built uh, the Bard class. Yeah. Although I will say um, though, if you happen to go a uh, uh, Valor or a Swords Bard. Because bards tend to want to use concentration spells in battle, I would definitely recommend um, as soon as you can picking up the Warcaster and or the Resilience Constitution feat just to help shore up your concentration saves to main co to maintain concentration. Yep, I think that is a great piece of advice. Yeah, and as every other bard, they could just stay in the back row and be fine a good chunk of the time. Stay in the back row and either throw spells or pontificate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that, there's definitely a lot of good versatility within the bard. You can do a lot of different things. And, and like I mentioned, um, don't be limited by I have to be the mu the musical instrument blank pain bard because as you can see with the eloquence bard that's geared to be an an ambassador right exactly yeah. or or a professional um, bser <laughs> <laughs> uh, well maybe I think all bards might fall into that category anyway Nakai that's that might just that might be a secret skill of all bards. <laughs> and speaking of bards, just want to close out the bard class overview with just a little tidbit of information. Players, please. Just because you're a bard doesn't mean you have to seduce every dragon you come across. Or. <laughs> 
any ever, anybody that you don't want to. That that is not a requirement of playing a bard, a hundred percent. As bar players, I promise you this: if you try to seduce a dragon, especially too many times. I think a lot of GMs would probably ask you, can you make a, constitu a constitution save and throw? <laughs> and, and we'll let you have the, um, the courtesy of having a little bit of um, flavor within your mind to see where that's going. Well, I, I think that's probably a good place to leave that, Nikai. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I should probably have set spoiler alert in case any parents are watching this with their kids. I, I'm glad to see you having to tell your kids that story now to that question and not me. <laughs> and, and with that, guys, um, keep your life geeky. And next week, we'll be taking a look at the cleric and the druid classes from an overview perspective. So, until then, stay geeky, my friends. Bye, everyone.